Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just in a chit chatty kind of mood and have some questions to ask and I think also that booktube may have broke me. Um, I do feel broken <laughs> about mood reading in particular, not overall, just that booktube has caused me to almost not be able to really mood read. And so I thought I'd come on and just kind of talk about that, see what everyone thinks about the concept of mood reading. Are you a mood reader? What does it mean to you to mood read? Uh, and just kind of go through that. So for me, in March, I had a full TBR. I did. But I also had some room in there because I knew I was still reading the books for the Book 2 Prize. I didn't know how long it was going to take. And I ended up being able to fit in some things for the Women's Prize. And I really liked that, being able to have that flexibility. And then at the very end, meaning this is, I'm filming this on Wednesday, we'll go live on Thursday. On Tuesday, I had finished reading every book that was on my TBR and all the books that I had from checked out from the library. I quite literally had no official commitments for reading in the rest of March. And I had Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, which still hasn't happened by the time this video goes live. Like, that's amazing. What do I want to read? And I went and I got into selection paralysis. I swear, I went and perused my bookshelves and it's like I could not make a decision about what book to pick up. Now, I have to say, before starting my YouTube channel, I kind of mood read a lot more. I never had a set of books I wanted to try and tackle in a given month. I would go out, put books on hold at the library, and kind of when they came came um, came available is where how I kind of prioritized. I have my 1001 list, which I was just slowly working my way through and randomly picking a book off of that list every once in a while. And then I started making a list of books to focus on uh, in the current year which was great. And I was slowly making my progress, but I didn't worry about it too much. So I never had a TBR. I didn't start making TBRs until I started this channel. I also didn't have a big library like I do kind of behind me now of a bunch of unread books. I really used my library very, very well. I used eBooks quite a bit and we just had never got a lot of physical books after we moved. Um, we had downsized, and then when we moved into this house, we just never changed that behavior of going to the library. And I would just wait for a book uh, if it wasn't available yet, or I would buy it as an ebook. So this phenomenon of not being able to select a book is very new. <laughs> and I will also say in the last, it'll be two years, two years coming up that I've been filming stuff here. Uh, in that two years, I love making TBRs. I love having a list of books. I can, I love crossing off a list. I love all of that part of the process. And for me, for having a small set of books that I commit to reading in the month means I don't have this, you know, out here going, what am I going to read next? And I honestly got out of the habit of mood reading. Uh, I'm just really curious if anyone else has experienced this. Uh, and what do you do <laughs> in this? It's a silly kind of concept and it doesn't sound that complicated, but I can't believe how, how just I wasn't able to select something easily to read right away. Uh, and what I ended up doing is I went to my bookshelf and I picked up a stack of books. I ended up with this massive stack, okay, of ones of possibles, trying to narrow down my massive bookshelf behind me into something more reasonable and to select from because I was clearly overwhelmed with having this large amount of unread books on my shelf. I did this and it did not help me. <laughs> I thought it would help me and it, uh, I, I ended up kind of going through this. I talked to a friend of mine. She and I discussed which book maybe I should pick up. She and I read stuff together uh, quite frequently. Uh, and uh, she had picked a certain book and then my brain was like, no, I don't know. So what I ended up doing is I started this one, Cutter and Bone, which is a 1001 book. Uh, and it's one of the ones I have been looking forward to the most off of the 1001 book list uh, for this year. 
mainly because the concept sounds really fascinating and the the back blurb is really engaging and on tuesday evening <laughs> i read about 50 pages of this book and within the first 50 pages one of the main characters witnesses a murder um has sex with two different women and uses i think some type of drug and i was like yeah i might i'm not in that headspace maybe for garbagas this would be a good one so i put it back down okay then this morning i said okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try and narrow this big list down to three and pick one from that so i had brought downstairs with me this one again cutter and bone maybe you morning i'd feel more like reading it so i picked this one back up i also brought Earthlings by Sayaka Murata because I've heard so much about this particular book and thought maybe I'll pick up this one. It's not very long. I could potentially read another book uh, in the four days that I had available. Uh, so I brought this one. I read the first five or six pages and got to the point where she said her cousin was her boyfriend and said, mm, probably not. Not right now. Not right now. The last one that I brought up downstairs this morning was this one, For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is supposed to be a Little Red Riding Hood reimagining. I guess this part, there's also a sequel to this one. My friend Sonia sent this to me. Thank you so much, Sonia, over a year ago. And so there is a lot of me that was like, I should pick this one up. I have some time. May as well pick this one up. And I opened it and closed it kind of right away. I'm like, okay, this is just not working. For whatever reason, I'm struggling to want to pick up some of these books when I have this big opportunity. So when that happens or I'm in a reading slump, my go-to is always going to end up being military romance, <laughs> preferably with some hunky Navy SEAL and some unrealistic circumstances and some you know, damsel in distress who has to be rescued. And they invariably fall in love and live happily ever after. That's my go-to brain candy when I'm struggling. I went out and looked and one of my favorite military romance authors did have a new book that had come out and that author is Susan Stoker. This is a book six in a series. So it is the last one in the series of one of her seal. She has multiple different series. Um, and so I had read the other five, but a little while ago. And I picked up the book this morning and thought, I'm going to do this. And normally those books start with a long kind of buildup you know something happens emergency happens they have to rescue someone and then they get involved this book starts with them already knowing each other okay i'm okay with that and already in the first page deciding that they are going to have a friends with benefits relationship and this was at 7 a.m this morning on wednesday that i started reading it and within the first 15 pages, I think, there were multiple <laughs> extremely explicit sex scenes, which I am I am on board with, I mean, for the most part, but there's something about it at 7 a.m. <laughs> when I haven't had my coffee yet that just didn't quite work that early in the morning. Um, and it was so much and so fast and unexpected because like I said, in the past books of hers, uh, it, it took a little bit more buildup. So I was anticipating kind of digging into this you, military operation kind of component of it and getting into the story and getting reminded of who the characters were and then wham, sex, explicit sex. I was ready for it, ready for it. I was not ready at 7 a.m. when I hadn't had my coffee. Um, so I kind of put it aside a little bit. I read more at lunchtime. I'm much, much better with it now at lunchtime. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'm, I'm awake now. I can handle this a little bit more. And it is just complete brain candy and it's wonderful. But do you ever experience this where if you have a big schedule of books that you get in this mode of not being able to select something, I will end up finishing that military romance sometime tonight. It's a very easy read. I have two more days before I have to start my April reads. I was tempted to pick up one of my April reads and kind of get ahead. It's like, no, I'm supposed to be mood reading, not not getting ahead. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted just to pick up something fun, something I wanted to read. And I have forgotten how to do that. I seriously forgotten how to do that. Uh, it is absolutely amazing that 
I'm struggling so much with this concept. So really curious, what do you do if you've ever had this issue? If you have a scheduled TBR, do you ever have this kind of issue when you want to pick up something else that you just are in this, I don't know quite how to narrow down my selection. And then everything I pick up, I look at and go, well, maybe this other book would be a better one for me to read. So I'll read a little bit of that and then I'll put it aside and then read a little bit of another one and a little bit of another one, and then I get nowhere. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I was just curious, thought I'd come out, do a chatty, chatty update, and let everyone know I'm broken. <laughs> I am broken for mood reading. Um, yeah, I don't know if I should just make a list of, here's my stack of when I have some free time, my free stack TBR, free time stack, which feels very anti-mood reading because then it's just another list that I'm working my way through. And I love all the projects I have. I mean, I have a subscriber favorites one. I have a discover new authors one for me. I have the TBR tackle. All of those are fantastic. And I can pick a single book off of that without too much like angst about it. But this idea of just picking up whatever I want over the four days has just caused me all kinds of, you know, weird feelings. So yeah, just curious. Curious if you've experienced this. What do you do if you have experienced this? What book do you recommend in this case? Is there a book that you think I should pick up that you think would be just perfect for me to read in my mood reading extravaganza over the next few days? I do. I do still have. Woo! Yikes. I do still have, of course, all of these to pick from. And I do still have these three to pick from, from a mood read kind of place. Is this what I want to read? I don't know. I don't know. I need help. That's the only topic I have for you today. I hope you're well. It has turned beautiful here in the Seattle area. Um, and I am really enjoying all of the lovely, lovely weather. <sighs> Maybe I should just go outside and give up on reading for today. <laughs> But let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you think creating a TBR, a scheduled, a very scheduled you know, reading list, does it break you for mood reading? I'd love to hear your ideas, thoughts. Let me know if there's something that you think out of this list or this list, these two stacks I have, that there's something in there that you think that's what you should read. Let me know, because I clearly cannot make up my own mind. But as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks, bye.